Welcome to our lecture online. Here again, we're trying to find the perimeter and the area, in this case of this triangle that's drawn in red, but um, we're not given the length of the sides. We have to figure out what those are in the first place, and we're going to need to use the distance formula to find the length from B to C and the length from A to C. To find the area, we can actually make that a little bit easier. If we assume that each one of the squares is one meter, so let's say here, here's the origin. Let's call that the origin. And if each of the squares is equal to one meter, like this, and each of the square like this is equal to one meter, we can clearly then, this, then figure out what the length of the base is and what the height is of the triangle. So in this case, we can say, we can say that the area is equal to one half times the base times the height and that would therefore be equal to one half times the base we can see that's one two three four meters and the height would be one two three four five meters see here one two three four five meters correct so you see that's 20 divided by 2 that would be 10 meters squared for the area of that triangle now to find the perimeter we're going to need to find the length of each of the sides We've already determined that this side here is equal to four meters. So we can say that from A to B, the length of that is equal to four meters, but we don't know the length from B to C, and we don't know the length from A to C. We have to use the distance formula. And here we have the general formula of what that would look like. So the length from A to B would equal the square root of the difference in the X coordinate squared plus the difference in the Y coordinate squared of those two points. So let's determine the coordinates of each of those points. So for C, the coordinates for the X value, that would be one to the right from the Y axis, that would be one. And for the uh, Y value, that would be one, two, three, four. So that's, those are the coordinates, the X and Y coordinates as we call them for the point C. For the point B, the X coordinate would be uh, from here, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And the Y coordinate would be minus one. And for A, the X coordinate would be 1, 2, and the Y coordinate would be minus 1. So now we have the coordinates of all three points. Let's now find the length from A to C. So the length from A to C is equal to the square root of X sub, well, we're going to take C minus X sub A, and we're going to square that, and plus Y sub C minus Y sub A, and we'll square that, plugging in the numbers, the square root of x sub c, so that's the x coordinate of point c, which is one, minus the x coordinate of a, which is two. Now notice, it doesn't matter if this number comes out to be negative or positive, since we're squaring it anyway, plus y sub c, so that would be the y coordinate of c, which is four, minus y sub a, and that would be minus 1. So minus times a mi a minus minus 1 squared. Notice we have to keep the signs correct. I left off the units meters to make it a little bit cleaner to work with. So this would be equal to the square root of, that would be minus 1 squared plus minus times a minus, that's plus 4 plus 1 is 5, that would be 5 squared. And so that would be equal to the square root of uh, one, negative 1 squared is 1, plus uh, 25 squared, uh, 5, that would be 25, which is equal to the square root of 26. Okay. So now we find the length from, let's see here, we have the length from A to B, which is 4, the length from A to C, and of course, we want to put meters behind it because it's in meters, and then we want to find the length from B to C. So the length from B to C is equal to the square root we take the x coordinate of b, which is 6, and subtract the x coordinate of c, which is 1. So 6 minus 1 squared, plus we take the y coordinate of b, which is minus 1, and subtract from that the y coordinate of c. So minus 1 minus 4, square that, that gives us the square root of 6 minus 1, that's 5 squared, plus minus 1 minus 4, that's minus 5 squared. Again, it doesn't matter. If it's negative because we're squaring it so this is equal to the square root of 25 plus 25 which is equal to the square root 
of 50. And again, that would be in meters. So now we can go ahead and find the perimeter. So the perimeter is equal to the sum of all three sides. So on this side, the side would be four meters plus then the side from A to C, A to C, that would be the square root of 26 meters, plus, and here would be the square root of 50 meters. All right, now let's go ahead and add these up. And so that gives us four meters plus, now the square root of 26, that's almost the same as the square root of 25. The square root of 25 would be five, the square root of 26 would be one more, a little bit more, so about 5.1 meters. And the square root of 50, which is very close to the square root of 49, the square root of 49 is 7, so the square root of 50 is about 7.1 meters to the nearest decimal place. So that would be equal to 4 plus 5, that's 9, that's 16.2 meters. That's rounded off to the nearest one decimal place, and that's a decimal right there. And that's how it's done. The area and the, the area and the perimeter of a triangle where we're not sure what the length of the sides are, and we have to use the distance formula to calculate those sides. That's how we do it.